And now, method of moments in 3D for electrostatics problem. As I told you before, the electrostatics uh, is the only pro electromagnetic problem that allows, or magnetostatic, but in this case electrostatic, is the only magnetic uh, problem that allows uh, a scalar solution that it is much easier to program for you. And for that reason, we avoid here the electrodynamic uh, case. The integral equation is the one that I showed you before. It's just this, the convolution of the charge, which is the unknown, with the green function, okay? And this is, this, this convolution, the charge with the green function is equal to the potential, and then we set the boundary condition. We know that the potential of the surface is equal to V0. Of course, if you have a capacitor, you will um, you will analyze a parallel plate capacitor with flat planar plates. So you will set, for example, the voltage difference to be zero. That is, you will set, for example, one plate to be zero over two and the other to be zero minus be zero over two. So in this case, the boundary condition will be plus or minus be zero over two. Okay. Anyway. The important thing here, the thing that I want you to learn how to manage is the triangle mesh. We have a surface, this will be, in your case, will be a flat surface and that we can uh, easily discretize with uh, triangles. But the method that I will show you for discretization is general and will allow you also to discretize curved surfaces if you uh, wish to. In general, we mesh uh, uh, curved surfaces with uh, triangles, these small triangles. Although the triangles are planar, they uh, give a good approximation of the of a curved surface uh, surface, and you can always improve the approximation by using a higher number of triangles by using a smaller triangles. And uh, so the basis functions will be triangular. Okay, there will, there will be triangular basis functions, but the, they will be triangular pulses, but the, the charge will be constant, so the basis functions will be uh, triangles of amplitude of uh, height equal to one. So this, the basis of, of, the, of this, is this triangle here, is just an approximation of the surface. We have one triangle here, we have here another triangle, another triangle, another triangle, etc. But within the triangle, the charge is constant. Okay? It is the basis function is equal to one because remember that we approximate the total charge as the uh, linear combination of the basis functions, okay? So if the basis function has an amplitude equal to one, oh, sorry, this is R prime. If the basis function has an amplitude equal to one, the coefficient of the linear combination is the constant charge in the basis function. Okay, so our unknowns, Q and the unknowns of method of moments, these are in fact the unknowns, okay? This Q and are the unknowns. These unknowns will be in fact the constant charge at all the triangles. So I have made here a plot that draws the, the charge, the solution. In fact, this is the solution of this, of this problem. This, uh, this problem, the geometry here is much more complicated than the one that, to, that, that you have to solve that is too simple uh, flat uh, plates, planar plates, and the, the capacitor defined by these two plates, okay? This is, example is far more complicated, the geometry, the code to analyze it is obviously the same. And I show you here the charge. You can see that the charge is constant. This example of this triangle here, here has a very small charge, probably 
below uh, minus one point half, while this other triangle here has a very high charge, for example this one, a very high charge, probably uh, about 1.2 or something like that, okay? So this is uh, charge density, of course. So uh, I think that you see clearly the basis functions are triangular shape with constant pulse, with constant uh, charge, okay? Now, the matrix elements. Remember that the matrix elements are in general, the matrix elements are in general the weighting of some, the, the, the inner product of some weighting functions with the uh, operator applied to the basis functions. But uh, these are delta because we have uh, point matching, so in fact, what we have is the, oper the linear operator applied to the um, to the basis functions sampled point matching sampled at some sampling points. So we have in fact we will use point matching at some sam sampling points R M. Okay. In order to compute this, we have to compute the integral of the, com the convolution integral of the Green's function times uh, times uh, a constant charge, and this is essentially since the Green's function is one over four pi epsilon, and here we have. Uh, R, which is the distance, here we have the distance between the, the evaluation point and the variable of integrations that are points along the triangle, we, ca we ha in fact have to compute this integral. If we assume that the, the charge is constant within the triangle and goes outside the integral, what remains for constant charge, for constant charge, what remains if the integral of the Green's function, taking out of the integral the constants 4 pi epsilon, what we have is essentially is the integral of 1 over r on a triangular uh, surface. Surface, Of course, the, what we said to do this integral, what we said, we shift the, or the coordinate origin uh, uh, to here, so to r, we make rm equal to the to zero, to the coordinate origin, this is just a shift. So what we have in fact is the integral of one over r, okay, in a triangle. And this can be computed analytically. In Atenea, in the digital campus, uh, in the folder for with containing interesting papers, I have put uh, there the paper by the team of Rao, by the team of Professor Wilson, Rao was a student at that time, the paper of Rao about the in computing this integral. This integral uh, is can be computed analytically, but the resulting formula is so complicated. Uh, it's oh, everything is in that paper, but the resulting formula is so complicated that we have programmed it for you. In fact, the program has been written by my colleague Eduard Uveda. Eduard is the the, the the lecturer that will give you practical project two. So next uh, Monday you will have practical project two with Eduard Uveda, and uh, he's the person who brought the function that computes this integral analytically. It's just programming the formulas in this paper, but the programming of these formulas is not trivial. So we have already made it this for you. This is the MATLAB function. This MATLAB function is in the Atenea. In Atenea, you have uh, a, zip, a zip file containing the functions. In fact, you have them here that are in the uh, in the zip file that is uploaded to Atenea. And one of these functions is this. This is the the function that computes the integral. So you have everything here. You have a, a help that explains everything. 
in fact I have copied I have copied the help here I have copied the help here so the arguments to this function are first rf this is the field evaluation point so this is rm in our equations this rm is the sampling point of the boundary condition this is the position of the testing function equal to a uh, delta okay so the, the testing function is a delta at rm so we sample with point matching we sample the boundary condition at rm so this is the point where we compute the potential so this is here this is a parameter of the integral equal to the point where we compute the potential and in fact it is equal remember that uh, m is the row index m is the row index in the method of moments matrix so this rm corresponds to the point the evaluation point at a given row if the method of moments matrix is this we have a given row of index m corresponds to a sampling point equal to rm the other uh, the next three arguments are the position of the first vertex of the triangles r1 is the first vertex of the triangles r2 is the position of the second vertex of the triangles and r3 is the position of the third vertex of the triangles and this can be matrices containing the x y and c coordinates of these vertices for all the triangles for all the triangles okay so this means that if we can pass the to this function the coordinates of the vertices of all the triangles it will compute the integrals corresponding to all the triangles and a single sampling point so this function will compute a whole row a whole row of the impedance matrix this is very important and i repeat it this function will compute a whole row of the impedance matrix corresponding to a sampling point rm where m is the index of the row and having including the contribution the contribution of all the triangles you know that uh, any source any ba the basis functions correspond to columns so uh, any source or charge triangle corresponds to a column so this function computes the contribution of all the columns and the result is a vector the result is a vector equal to the value of this integral for a single evaluation point rm and all the source triangles so it, com it includes the row for all the columns the row of the matrix for all the columns and this is very important because now the code to 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 the code to uh, fill the impedance matrix will be very simple there is an, an of course these uh, arguments r1 and r2 and r3 are matrices because they have three rows one row for each uh, x y and z component of the uh, position of the vertices and one column corresponding to uh, each triangle so the r1 is the position of the fir first vertex of all the triangles so for example the third column of r1 matrix is the position of the first vertex of the third triangle t3 the, the triangle number three and for example the the fourth column of this matrix is the position of the first vertex of triangle four okay and the same for r2 which is the position of the second vertex of all the triangles and r3 which is the position of the third vertex of all the triangles the vertices are defined like this for example here vertex one vertex 2 and vertex 3 
okay? So R1 is the position of vertex 1, R2 is the position of vertex 2, and R3 is the position of vertex N3. Okay, there is another two more arguments. This one is the normal to the vectors um, to the set of triangles. That is, this parameter is the unit normal. The unit normal is perpendicular to the triangle, but it has, uh, 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 the direction is perpendicular to the triangle, but it has a sense. And the sense must be, must be, must agree with the rotation, vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 3. So if we rotate ver uh, vertex 1, then vertex 2, then vertex 3, according to the right hand rule, then uh, with the right hand rule, the right hand rule defines the sense of this uh, unit normal. So this will be the sense of the, of the normal. So I say here it's important because the, the, the order of the three vertex, the order of the, of the three vertices, vertex 1, vertex 2, and vertex 3, the order of the three arguments must be consistent with the sense of the argument unit normal. Okay? There is a final argument which is the position of the center. The position of the center is just the uh, x, y, and z coordinates of the center for all the triangles. And these two last arguments, the unit normal and the position of the center, are again matrices of three rows, three rows corresponding to the x, y, and z coordinates, and columns corresponding to the different triangles, okay? So, for example, the third column will include the unit normal to the triangle number three, and in the case of the last argument, the third column will include the position of the center of triangle number uh, three. And how to discretize the geometry? The best way to manage um, a triangle, a triangle mesh is to have uh, two matrices, the vertex matrix, the vertex matrix, and the topology matrix. The vertex matrix includes the x, y, and z coordinates for all the vertices, so it is a matrix of three rows and number of columns equal, equal to the number of, of vertices. This is, this is quite uh, easy to understand. This is just a matrix including the coordinates of all the vertices. We have one column for each vertex. So, for example, column 2 includes the x, y, and z coordinates of vertex 2. It's very easy to understand. Now the topology matrix. The topology matrix includes the indices. This is indices. the indices of the vertices corresponding to each uh, triangle. So, for example, for uh, triangle 2, we have that vertex 1 has this index, and this index can be, for example, uh, it can be, for example, vertex 3, okay? And the second vertex of triangle 2 is whatever, can be, for example, vertex 1, okay? And the third vertex of triangle 2 is, in this case, we have already made uh, the line, is vertex 2, okay? So in this case, the first vertex of triangle 2 is equal to vertex 3, so we have a 3 here. The second vertex of triangle 2, in this case, is vertex 1, so we have a 1 here. And the third vertex of triangle 2 is vertex 2, so we have a 2 here, okay? So our column, the second column is 3, 1, 2, corresponding to vertex 3, vertex 1, and vertex 2 that are the three vertices of triangle 2. I think that it is also quite easy to understand, and this is a very standard procedure, everybody does the same 
mm, the same representation of the topology of the triangle mesh because it's very convenient and very easy to program, very easy to understand. Okay, how can we fill these matrices? You will, uh, you have to write a, a function for that for a given object returns these two matrices. And it is convenient to, to use the, the MATLAB structure data. A structure is a type of data in many programming language, but in particular also in MATLAB. And we call this, for example, OBG, which stands for object. So if our structure representing the object is OBG, we have two matrices, OBG uh, point vertex and OBG point, uh, let's say, topology, but for short, I write a uh, topol. And these two matrices are the vertex matrix and the topology matrix, okay? And how can we fill these matrices? Well, we can just um, first generate the coordinates of the vertices. We can uh, use a, a uniform to generate the coordinates of the vertices. We can create a uniform grid in X and Y, for example. This, this is, there are many, there are infinite ways, way, there are infinite ways, sorry, waves not, infinite ways to do that. In, there are many possibilities. It is just a very simple idea. You can do it in a different way if you wish, but it is, it is just a very simple idea that for the plate uh, works uh, quite well. It is to create a uniform grid in X and and y. Okay? It's a uniform grid in x and y. So uh, we just uh, create a, a uniform sampling in x with linear space, uniform sampling in y with linear space. We, you, we use the well-known mesh grid function to create the, the grid. You already know that. And now the, we can set the, the coordinates, the set coordinates. The set coordinates will be equal to some function of x and y. For example, if our plate, this is x, y, and, and z, and z, if we have, uh, if our object is, for example, a planar plate, okay, parallel to the x, y axis, and we have a uniform mesh a uniform grid, sorry, and we have a uniform grid in X and, and Y, we can just set the set coordinate constant to the points corresponding to the grid in X and Y. So here we just set a set coordinate of all the points in the X and Y uniform grid and just be a, a constant, uh, constant uh, set coordinate, okay? But imagine that the, that the object is not a planar plate. Imagine that the object has some shape. X, Y, Z. Okay, imagine that the object has some shape. For example, it is a hemispherical, a hemispherical cap, for example, or whatever. Imagine, for example, a hemispherical cap, okay? So we have a uniform grid in, in X and Y. And here we compute the set coordinate of X of each point, the set, the set coordinate of each point at the X, Y grid using some function that uh, if the object is a hemispherical cap, this will be the equation of the sphere uh, that is, for example, like this, or, or in, imagine, for example, something like this, whatever. This is just an example, okay? It's just an example. It can be whatever. This would be for a hemispherical cup, but it can be anything that gives you the shape of the surface. This can be uh, used in, in case, this strategy can be used in cases where uh, we have uh, 
a surface that can be easily mm, represented with a function of x and y. Okay, if the surface can be easily represented like this, some function of x set equal to some function of x and y, this works very well. However, if the sur surface uh, cannot be represented in that, in that way, then you need another discretization strategy. But this will work very well for our planar plates in the case of a parallel plate capacitor. So this is okay for us. For more complex surfaces, we would need maybe a different strategy. But it is okay for the planar plate. Now, this uh, x and y and z coordinates are directly the coordinates of the vertices. So the coordinates of the vertices that we store in the vertex matrix will be directly the result of the mesh grid function that includes the x and y coordinates of all the points in the grid and then the set coordinate resulting from, from the function that computes the shape of the surface, in our case a constant for the parallel, for the planar plate it will be a constant set coordinate but for a different surface it will be a function of x and y. Anyway, we already have now the vertex, the vertex matrix. How we can compute the topology matrix? Well, here is the, this is the important step, this is the step where we build the triangles from the coordinates of the vertex. There is an algorithm that is called the Delaunay algorithm. This is a well-known algorithm in mathematics that is an algorithm to build a, triangle, a triangular mesh from a cloud of points that are more or less uniformly distributed. Okay? Fortunately, MATLAB includes a function that computes this algorithm. So, taking profit that it is already programmed in MATLAB, we don't have to program anything here. It's already programmed in MATLAB. So we just have to call this function that for the, the grid, this x and y coordinates, this is the, this, this x and y coordinates, x and y, okay? These are the coordinates of the points of our uniform grid. These are just the coordinates of the points of our uniform grid. And this Delaunay function will build the triangles for the uniform grid, okay? It will build the triangles and, the, and will return the topology matrix of this uh, triangle mesh or triangular mesh. So we don't have to do anything. Just call the Delaunay MATLAB function and it will give us the topology matrix. So you can see that with three programming lines, we already have our vertex and topology matrix, and we have a good, um, well, we have variables containing all the data of the triangular mesh. But however, we have written uh, a function that reads uh, a triangular mesh coming from a 3D meshing software, in this case it is the GID uh, measure, it is a very good uh, meshing software, three-dimensional meshing software. So we can export a uh, mesh using this, this meshing software, it's not only meshing, it's, it allows you to model uh, and create a model of a very, very complex shape. I can, I can show you something. JD or JIT is a very powerful uh, commercial software for for modeling and meshing, and you can see, for example, an example of a uh, um, model and mesh of the Sagrada Familia, a car, whatever. This is uh, a very good software, and I like it because for two things: because it is simple to learn and simple to use, but very powerful, and also because it is developed by a team coming from our university, from the Polytechnic University of Catalonia. So I like it for these two reasons. It is a home software in some in some sense, and also and also it has a student edition that allows to solve uh, 
quiet and uh, uh, of course not the more complex problems because it's limited in the number of triangles but you can use it to solve interesting problems it's quite good so you can just download a student version and use it and so we have written a function that reads the image that has been exported using this uh, software is we if we go here to the matlab to the matlab um, routines that we have provided you you have here this uh, small routine is just a routine that reads the that reads the a file including uh, that a file that has been exported from git software and builds the vertex matrix here and the topology matrix here so you only have to call this function you just, and there is a help here the argument is the file name and the return argument is the object structure containing the to vertex and topology matrix and we have created a simple example for you this um, file plate dot msh this file includes the data of a very <coughs> of a small planar plate so just to test if you are able to successfully create the linear system matrix and solve the linear system compute the charge compute the capacitance etc you can just use this uh, function and the file including a um, uh, planar plate that we have created for you you can just use this to create a planar plate then just create another planar plate by changing the set coordinate you can, it will this the file that we have uh, created for you will include the geo, includes the geometry of a planar plate but it has a given set coordinate if you change the set coordinate to another coordinate that is this parallel and but with a different set coordinate okay what you get is an object consisting on two parallel plates and that is a parallel plate capacitor so you can use this just to test if if you are able to successfully build the linear system and solve and compute the capacitance etc but of course at the end you must build your own geometry i want you to build your own geometry using using these functions okay so now we have the geometry in the vertex and topple matrices but for the function that computes the element of the impedance matrix remember that this function uh, includes the integral computes the integral on a triangle this is the integration symbol not an s this function computes the integral of one over r uh, for a uh, uh, basis function triangle okay and remember that the arguments of this uh, of this function were the coordinates of the first, ver the first vertex the coordinates of the second vertex and the coordinates of the third vertex you can easily obtain the coordinates of this vertex for example for vertex one you go to the topple matrix row one of the topple matrix is in are the indices of the first vertex for all the triangles so this is the index the, these are the indices of all the vertices sorry the indices of the first vertex of all the triangles first vertex of all the triangles and then we use this as column index in the vertex matrix and so we will obtain a matrix containing the x y and z coordinates of the first vertex of all the triangles and the same for the second vertex we just change the one by two so now in the second row of the topple matrix we have the indices of all the second vertices for all the triangles and with this we index the columns of the vertex matrix to obtain the coordinates of the second vertex at all the triangles and the first for the third vertex using the third row of the topple matrix 
Once we have the coordinates of the vertices, we can easily compute the center of the vertices for all the triangles, the center of the vertices for all the triangles just by averaging the centroid of the triangle is the average of the coordinates of the three vertices. So we just average like this and obtain a matrix containing the x, y and z coordinates of all the vertices. In order to compute the unit normal, the unit normal, okay, the unit normal in with a sense of rotation like this, the rotation must be vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 3 is the sense of rotation. In order to obtain the unit normal, we, com you, we compute the cross product, the cross product between the vector that goes from vertex 1 to, vectors to vertex 2, this vector that is B2, B2 minus B1, and the vector that goes from vertex 1 to vertex 3, that is B3 minus B1. We compute the cross product of these two vectors using the MATLAB cross function, that this MATLAB cross function accepts arguments that are matrices that in vertical in the the rows are the x, y and z coordinates of the of the components of the vertex that the vectors that we are multiplying and then we have columns for different vectors to be multiplied so we can in one instruction compute the unit normal or the cross product for all the triangles. We compute with one instruction the cross product for all the triangles having one column of the matrices for each triangle. And the result is this matrix uh, C. This matrix C includes the X, Y and Z coordinates in the row. So it has uh, three rows, X, Y and Z coordinates for each row. And then it has columns for all the triangles. So one column for triangle one, triangle two, triangle three, etc. It, it is three times the number of triangles, okay? And uh, it is uh, the unit, it is the normal, but it is not the unit normal. The magnitude of the cross product is equal to twice the area. So if we compute the norm, we compute the norm of the, of this uh, normal to the triangles, and divide by two, we get the area. This is the area of the triangles. We need the area of the triangles because remember that the unknown is the charge density. If the unknown is the charge density, in order to compute the total charge in one triangle, we have to comp multiply the charge density that is the unknown corresponding to that triangle with the surface of the triangle. So we need this uh, variable, including that the area, that this variable is the area for all the triangles. It's a vector having the area for all the triangles. It is in fact a row vector with the area for all the triangles. And then once we, that we have the area, the area is, is half the, the magnitude of, of the of the normal vector. The, we have to normalize the normal vector to get the unit normal. So we have to divide by the magnitude. The magnitude is twice the area. So we divide vector C. Vector C is the, the normal to the surface. We divide vector C by twice the area of the triangles. But since vector C includes in rows the x, y, and z components, and in columns, the, the unit, the, not the unit normal, but the normal to all the triangles, we have to divide by a matrix that has uh, all the rows equal to the area of the different triangles, and the, uh, and the columns are different with the different areas of the triangles. And we can build this matrix using the MATLAB function repmat. This is this matrix. This function just replicates the 
uh, replicates the vector containing the area of all the triangles in the three rows of the matrix of the normal to the surface. Okay? And once you have done this, you have uh, everything and you can easily view the geometry, for example, the field 3 MATLAB function will allow you to generate a plot like this that shows you the geometry of the object, the geometry of the triangle mesh, so that you can check if you, if you have a correct meshing or not. You can make a visual checking easily. Of course, it is important to call the function axis with argument equal because this will set the scaling of x, y, and c axis, the scaling of the three axis will be equal so that a sphere will look like a sphere. Otherwise, if the scaling of the three axis is not equal, a sphere will look like an ellipsoid and it will be far more difficult to, to, to do a visual check if the, if the geometry is correct or, or not. Now let's go to okay this is this. Now let's go to the post processing the post processing is the visualization of the data remember that I explained you the post processing in two dimensions and in two dimensions we had some MATLAB functions to plot uh, nice uh, nice pictures nice figures of the potential in 2D here in 2D, remember that B was a matrix in having the potential uh, for uh, the potential in 2D. So for all points in X and Y, you had samples. You had samples of the potential. The elements of the matrix were samples of the potential that include uh, the the samples who corresponded. For example, the columns are X coordinates and the rows are Y coordinates, or vice versa. But the samples correspond easily to the to the samples in X and Y uniformly. This is in 2D. In 3D, we have the same thing, but with three-dimensional matrices. So we create a uniform grid of field evaluation points. So these points are the field or potential, but the potential or field evaluation points. potential or field evaluation points but they are now three-dimensional points no longer x and y coordinates but now we have x y and z coordinates we can use the mesh grid function with x y and z arguments with three arguments and we will create three-dimensional matrices So these are three-dimensional matrices. These three-dimensional matrices look like this. These are just... Imagine that these three-dimensional matrices are a stack of two-dimensional matrices that have the sampling in X and Y, okay? Imagine that we you have slices of including the, the sampling in X and Y, and then you stack in vertical, these two-dimensional matrices, and you create a three-dimensional matrix that for each that for each set coordinate has a two-dimensional matrix with the x and y coordinates. Okay, so this is uh, the equivalent of the two-dimensional matrices, but now in 3D. So MATLAB is able to manage these three-dimensional matrices without no problem. It manages the matrices in the same way as it would do for two-dimensional matrices. You don't, you don't have to worry about that. You compute the potential due to each basis function at all the field evaluation points. The field evaluation points are three-dimensional, so MATLAB automatically will create a three-dimensional matrix for the potential. And you add the potential 
using the same loop that you uh, used before. Remember this loop that you, uh, or here, maybe here. Remember this loop to compute the potential due to all the, the basis functions you add for each loop iteration, you add the potential due to a new basis function and add the result to the overall potential, starting, of course, with zero potential. So the same thing that you did for two dimensions, you must do it now in three dimensions. But MATLAB will, will automatically manage the three-dimensional voltage uh, matrix, so no problem with this. And once you have the three-dimensional voltage matrix, you call MATLAB gradient function, and it will take into account the, the, pole, the potential, I said voltage, but it's potential, which is the same thing, in fact. The, pot the three-dimensional potential matrix will be processed by the gradient function, and it will give you the x, y, and z coordinates of the electric field, but, but in 3D matrices. It, it will be 3D matrices again. And these three-dimensional matrices will include the x, y, and z coordinates of the field evaluated at, at the three-dimensional field evaluation points. Okay? And now that you have the, the potential and the field components in three-dimensional matrices corresponding to all the three-dimensional evaluation points, you can use MATLAB functions especially developed for plotting figures of these three-dimensional magnitudes. For example, you can plot the voltage using the, the voltage here, you can plot the voltage using the slice function. The slice function will plot two-dimensional slices like this, okay, or like this, two-dimensional slices of the potential in colors, and you and the arguments are the potential evaluation points x, y, and z are the 3D potential evaluation points, the three-dimensional potential matrix, and the coordinates of the planes, the coordinates of the cutting planes where you want to plot. So, for example, this x s is here, this is x, is x s, is the coordinate of this po plane, this uh, field evaluation plane, or potential evaluation plane, of constant x coordinate, this is x s, the coordinate of this plane, in this case, is x equal to zero. The y s is the coordinate of a field evaluation plane of constant y coordinate, in this case, this would be y s, equal to zero also in this example. And z s is the coordinate of a field evaluation plane of constant z coordinate, this is z s, in this case also, in this example, also equal to zero. These matrices can be void. If you use here an empty matrix, then if you use an empty matrix, uh, matrix, sorry, if you use an empty matrix, you eliminate the, you, you don't plot the result in a plane of constant set coordinate because you set the set coordinate of the plane equal to an empty matrix. If you have a matrix containing maybe two two uh, two coordinates, if you say, uh, uh, specify a matrix containing two coordinates, what you get are two evaluation planes, maybe better uh, black color, you get two evaluation planes, parallel evaluation planes of two different y coordinates, x, sorry, y s1 and y s2, okay? So these vectors, a, these are vectors, x s, y s, and z s, contain the coordinates of the field or potential evaluation planes. They can be empty matrices, so uh, spe to specify that you don't want uh, planes having that constant coordinate, or can be vectors containing more than co one coordinate if you want 
several field evaluation evaluation points. You can you can go to MATLAB. Let's go to Mat sorry uh, MATLAB here. You can we can go to MATLAB and help and use this and call the help of that function. You can also check the documentation, <coughs> etc. You have here all the documentation, all the relevant documentation for the slice matrix. The slice matrix, as I told you before, the slice matrix just Uh, create these plots. This is a slice. The slice matrix, no, the slice function creates this this plot. The slice and the contour slice creates this plot. This is contour slice. And we also have the, of course, the color map. The color map will draw the color bar, which is very nice. We have Sorry, we, the color bar function will create the color bar, obviously. The color map will change the color map to jet. I told you that this is probably the best and nicest uh, color map to show uh, variables like this, the magnitude of variables like this. And you also have the shading function. The shading function just makes the, the plot nicer because it will interpolate the color uh, from the the, the, the colors, it will interpolate the color samples and create a, a nicer result. This function was already in the example that I gave you for 2D. In 2D, we also have this shading function with the inter, with the inter argument that tells you to interpolate. There are other arguments. Other arguments are just flat or faceted, depending if you want the result to look like a flat or faceted color. There are different arguments, but the shading interp are, with the interp argument is the one that gives you the nicest and, and most beautiful uh, plot. Okay, and finally you can use the cone plot. This cone plot function will uh, will uh, draw the cones. These cones have the direction of the electric field, so the argument of the cone plot function is not the potential, but the electric field, the argument is the electric field. So this cone plot will draw cones with direction of the direction of the electric field and with uh, magnitude proportional to the magnitude of the electric field. Okay? The position of the cones is these three variables are the position of the cones and this is the magnitude of the of the cones okay the <coughs> the usage of this function is not uh, trivial and it often takes uh, quite a lot of time to make the function uh, work right so if you are in trouble i don't mind that you uh, just skip this function because it will uh, take you some time. So I prefer that you do all the rest and once everything is finished and uh, nice and all the results are right, if you have more time, then you also add the con plot, uh, uh, the cons to the plot with, with the con plot function. But leave this to the end. Only after everything is working well, this is just a bonus, but uh, don't do this before you finish with everything else because often takes uh, some time to make this function work correctly. Okay, so just to finish, the work that you have to do is to first uh, create the object geometry. So just create a function that returns the vertex and topol matrices and then con create an object consisting of two planar plates, that, that is uh, in fact a, para, a, a planar plate capacitor, okay, a parallel plate capacitor. Parallel plate capacitor like this, okay. Then just uh, in order to, 
compute the matrix of the elements of the matrix of the linear system you need to call this function this function will create the rows of your linear system of course then you have you also need to multiply by 1 over 4 pi epsilon but this is uh, trivial but in order to call this function you have to create the arguments v1 v2 v3 unit normal uh, position of the centers etc so you can have to first compute the variables that have the arguments for this function once that you have them you can call this function and compute the linear system elements compute the independent term that is the voltage of the plates one is one at one voltage v over two and the other voltage minus v over two okay and now you have the linear system you can solve the linear system compute the capacitance check with the reference the reference of course for a capacitor is epsilon times the surface of the plates over the distance between the plates and for this to work you need that the size of the plates is much larger than the separation so please do this with a small separation compared to the size of the plates because otherwise the approximate formula would not work very well and once you know that your result is correct because the capacitance is correct and using the charge at the triangles you can compute the potential and the field for a uniform 3D sampling point 3D sampling grid, okay okay, as I explained before and once that you, you have the potential and the field and the uh, three-dimensional sampling points then you call these functions to obtain nice and beautiful plots of the of the potential and the field if you have questions there will be a, a question and answer session next thursday you can ask me everything there and then if you have if after that you have further questions you can email me or use one of the next uh, question and answer sessions that will be that we will have by the end of chapter 4